Hello everyone, welcome to Rootstech. Uh, today I'm going to have the pleasure to talk with you about um, how to use DNA testing to learn about Native American ancestry. Uh, my name is Hugo Perigo. I have a PhD in uh, genetics and I spent the last 20 years uh, working on um, full-time, part-time, uh, being involved with genetic genealogy. It's a fascinating field and uh, the topic of today is quite interesting, although it's also a topic that is uh, um, sensitive. So things that I'm going to share with you today is uh, based on my personal experience and uh, the work that I have done in this field. I uh, had the pleasure to work in, um, in uh, some studies with population migration involving also Native American uh, ancestry, which has given me a little bit of experience in this area. And uh, that's what I'd like to share with you today. But I'm fully responsible for what I'm going to share. Now, um, to start off, let's review the three principal markers that are used in genetic genealogy. You're probably all familiar with them. The first one is the Y chromosome and is the DNA marker that is inherited from the paternal line. It, it comes from father to son and only males carry it. We also have autosomal DNA. Autosomal DNA is the majority of our DNA and we inherited from all of our ancestors in different percentages. Um, it's, it can be quite uh, uh, useful in learning more about our origins, in learning about our genetic cousins, but we also lose quite a bit at every generation. So autosomal DNA becomes a little bit more complicated when you're trying to pinpoint it to a specific ancestor. Um, like the Y chromosome, we also have mitochondrial DNA which um, markers auto, auto, um, mitochondrial DNA and Y chromosome. Uh, we know exactly where they come from in, uh, in our family tree. And uh, although they only represent one specific line, we know exactly which line it, it is that we are dealing with. In the case of mitochondrial DNA, it's the maternal line, the straight unbroken mother to daughter line. Both Males and females have mitochondrial DNA, uh, although only females can pass it on to the next generation, so it stops with a male. I have my mother mitochondrial DNA, but none of my children have um, their mitochondrial DNA. They all get it from their, from their mother, which is my wife. So, uh, knowing about these three types of markers and how they are inherited, is also very helpful because uh, um, as we talk about Native American ancestry, we can use each one of these markers to discover what we have uh, and if we have any Native American ancestry. So this presentation is going to be divided in two parts. The first one, I'm gonna provide a scientific background, National Geographic style of uh, how Native American history uh, from a scientific point of view, an anthropological point of view, have came about. And, uh, and then from there, we can extrapolate the type of information that is available to us uh, through DNA, uh, DNA testing, through commercial companies nowadays, based on this science, and figure out uh, if we do have any ancestry through our DNA that ties in with this particular part of the world. So this is a, a map of the world and uh, the arrows that you see, the blue arrows indicate migrations that scientists have been able to trace looking at the mutations on the Y chromosome, the male line. So that is a, a, an expansion and migration, a colonization of the world that happened in ancient times based only from a male perspective, which is the Y chromosome. In uh, yellow, orange, you see the mitochondrial DNA migration patterns. You see there is some overlapping as well as there are some discrepancies, but what we're interested on is what happened right here in um, what is known as the, it's, it's called the Bering Strait nowadays, but scientists refer to it as Beringia and uh, is a, a place that, that did not look like what it looks today 
uh, several thousand years ago during the last ice age. That became a crossroad or a, a, a refuge for some of our um, ancient ancestors as they expanded into different parts of the world. Based on what science tells us, America has been the last of the continents to be colonized by modern humans. This is a picture that shows what happened in the last few thousand years. And uh, um, during the last ice age, much of the sea, uh, a good part of the sea was trapped into ice caps in, north, uh, in the north part of the hemisphere and uh, most of North America and Europe, North, um, Northern Europe was covered with ice. And um, there was uh, this area which connected uh, Northeastern Asia, uh, Siberia, with what is modern day Alaska. And uh, there was a land bridge that was that connected the two because the sea level was lower and the land masses emerged. And uh, they allowed for uh, ancient, the, the ancient ancestors of modern Native Americans to come from Asia and uh, dwell in this area, which was not covered by ice, and live a, a, in a lifestyle similar to what groups like Eskimos or Inuits have lived. Um, you know, small population grow, um, very little uh, chances to expand because there was ice on both sides of this landmass. And so for thousands of years, a small group, a small population has survived in this area until the temperature improved and the ice became to melt. And therefore, there was a way to get into the American continent. And based on archaeological evidence on both sides of uh, uh, the Bering Strait, as well as uh, um, genetic evidence from autosomes, from uh, Y chromosome, and from mitochondrial DNA, we can determine a very clear migration path from um, Asia into the pristine American continent. And what we had here was an inhabited continent for the ancestors of Native Americans, which gave them a chance to grow quite rapidly and expand and, and settle in different areas. At first, they were gather hunters chasing large mammals um, like the mammoth or the cyber tooth, and then eventually developing into wonderful civilization that we all heard about, like the Maya and the Inca and the Aztecs, and, and so uh, much diversity in li linguistically, uh, culturally, and, and so on, all over the American continent. That happened all the way to the arrival of the Europeans uh, with Christopher Columbus in about 1492, uh, and, uh, and uh, the impact was catastrophic for Native Americans and caused a tremendous population drop almost to the uh, verge of, um, of extinction. Um, it is estimated that because of war, because of disease, because of slavery, uh, a very large uh, number of the natives that uh, live in the American continent um, were killed and died thus creating what is known as a population bottleneck, which reduced the genetic variation among all the other things. Uh, but from a scientific point of view, the genetic variation also decreased at this point. And so what we have in the modern day population and the survivors of that impact uh, with the Europeans um, almost five centuries ago uh, is just uh, a sample of all the genetic variation that could have been present in um, the molecular anthropologist Michael Crawford in uh, his book, The Origin of Native Americans, he estimated that as high as one in 25 Native Americans survived. Uh, I mean, as that's, 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 you know, that to say that out of every 25 people, only one survived this impact. And that um, the genetic makeup of uh, the people before Columbus, uh, the people of the, uh, of the American indigenous people of America might never be recovered completely because of that. Now, said all of that, now what can we do? You know, well, there, there is some knowledge the scientists have been able to reconstruct 
and uh, and uh, this knowledge applies to um, DNA tests that have been done on indigenous population as well as all population of the world and has given us a, a knowledge of what type of markers we can find among the natives which means that if I carry um, those markers today, then I know that somewhere in my pedigree chart, I'm going to have some uh, someone that uh, was probably a native of the Americas. So let's start with the Y chromosome. This is a schematic tree for the Y chromosome. The letters you see at the bottom is the name of the different lineages known, known as haplogroup that scientists have uh, given these names using these letters to the different branches and they're based on specific mutation that are found um, as the people expanded and that this mutation happened randomly in different parts of the world, creating some important milestones that help us understand uh, where humans uh, lived and when and where did they go from there. So the two branches that are of interest to us, and you can see this map, uh, this small map right here, there is a line called line C whose marker of mutation is called M130 and is a, a, a Y chromosome that is found in North America among some of the natives, including the Eskimos and Inuits. And then there is another marker called, uh, an haplogroup called Q, that went all the way to South America. In fact, 100% of natives in South America belong to haplogroup Q, who uh, marker is uh, 242, M242, which originated somewhere in Europe, and then uh, as they arrive into the Americas, they develop a new marker called M3, and that is typical of Native Americans. This is uh, the DNA of a friend of mine who's given me uh, the permission to use his DNA. He's uh, 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 half of his, uh, of his ancestry is European, the other half is Native, and what we have here is his Y chromosome, uh, he had uh, 111 markers done with some SNP testing um, at Family Tree DNA, which is the only company that provide a very detailed and uh, uh, thorough uh, Y chromosome testing. And so he was positive and certified for this branch that I show you in the slide before called Q with this marker called M3. Now he can do some additional testing if you like to, he can purchase them, but this is pretty accurate and deep. So that shows that his paternal line, here is, here is his pedigree, and uh, his, uh, his father, to fa father to son line is uh, uh, Native American, or that's, that's the origin. And you can see here in this heat map uh, to, uh, to the top of the slide, you can see as you go down south, 100% of the people uh, in the Central and South America belong to this uh, uh, haplogroup called um, Q. Now, we, we're going to see something more about this. Right? I told you 50% of his ancestry is Native American, but in this case, is his father. And we're going to see that also represented with his autosome. So somebody has a QM3 marker, they will know that uh, their father line is Native American. Likewise, we have a schematic mitochondrial DNA tree. So this is the story of our mothers. and. Uh, in my mitochondrial DNA lecture at Rootstack, I explained to you how all the mitochondrial DNA line ties in into uh, an ancient ancestor which scientists have friendly defined or referred to as mitochondrial Eve. This is not a biblical Eve, this is uh, the, the woman where all the mitochondrial DNA lines ties into back thousands of years ago. And uh, all the non African uh, mitochondrial Eve lived in Africa and the oldest, the oldest mitochondrial line are from Africa, but all the non-African lines come from this group called L3 and nested among all the different uh, mitochondrial DNA branches or haplogroup, there are these uh, mitochondrial DNA which are typical of uh, Native, uh, Native Americans, they're typical of the American continent and they're nested among all the different lines found around the world. We're gonna look at them in a little bit, um, in, in greater detail in this slide. You see again the L3, the non-African uh, lineage, where all the people from uh, Europe and, and Asia and, and uh, the Americas um, came from. 
and uh, in this uh, in this slide we have um, in red all the different branches that are considered or labeled Native American. So if your mitochondrial DNA test comes back to you and you have a B2, an A2, an X2A, a C1, all these codes on the mitochondrial DNA, all the red ones you see here, that means that your maternal line, your unbroken mother to daughter line, uh, back cell generation, end up being a Native American. So that's how we know that. And uh, with additional testing, uh, we've been able to define better these branches, but they're also branches of the main uh, branches that you saw in the slide before. So uh, although we are able to define better um, based on the mutation for each haplogroup, for each line of the mitochondrial tree, uh, we're still tied into this basic line. So when you have your test done and only uh, family tree DNA provide an accurate, complete uh, mitochondrial DNA test, then uh, they would tell you if you belong to any of these, uh, these groups. Um, there is another uh, company, 23andMe, that provides a survey of your mitochondrial DNA tree, uh, of your mitochondrial DNA haplogroup. And uh, although they don't, do not provide the list of mutations like family tree DNA does, and they don't provide matches to you, um, they will tell you if your mitochondrial DNA uh, belongs to one of these lines. And I'm going to show you here, this is another friend of mine. Uh, you can see the heat map on the top right here. Um, shows his haplogroup, which is his mitochondrial A2. Um, this is uh, information that came originally from 23andMe. And, uh, and this is his, uh, his, autos this is his autosomal DNA, where he had also his parents tested. So that's, um, it, it shows that uh, his father is totally European, but on his mother line, his autosomes are mostly European with a very small percentage that is Native American. And the fact that the mitochondrial DNA, which come from the mother line, and part of his autosome, which would come from this uh, side of the, of the family tree as well, since his father line does not have any uh, native, we indicate that he has uh, a, an ancestor that uh, along the maternal line um, that is Native American, and probably in the not so distant past because some of the autosomes have been preserved all the way down to, to him. This is again my friend uh, from before, the one that had the, the uh, Y chromosome belonging to Apple Group Q. Uh, told you it was half native and half European. As you can see that from the autosomal DNA from 23andMe and this colorful map, that he has about 46.4%, so about almost 50% that uh, is Native American. Notice it says East Asian or Native American. That's because the DNA of the two population is so similar that uh, because of the common origin uh, that the Native Americans have from, from the Asian population. And so at times they don't know, know how, um, how to distinguish the two. But you can see here that uh, uh, based also on his genealogy and his knowledge that we can be pretty confident that that is uh, um, all Native Americans. And then the other half is, uh, is European. And in this case, uh, the, the half that is native is from his father and then his mother's side is all European. This is again, uh, uh, some additional information that 23andMe provides him, same individual, uh, based on uh, the different population that uh, 23andMe has tested, uh, they can see the similarities between his DNA and some of these native groups, and they provided uh, a, a hierarchy, a list, where they say these 10 regions in Mexico is where we find the closest matches to your DNA out of all the, the different regions in this area of the world. And so he is from Mexico, and, uh, and then he knows that this is the area where his ancestors have lived in the recent past. This is another friend of mine, um, she uh, identifies herself as Navajo, and I want to I want to open a parenthesis. Is DNA does not define a person being native or non-native. Um, what a person, how a person identifies themselves is based on a number of factors which we have to respect. Also, oral tradition and, and cultural tradition are also have to be respected. It is a, a simple, uh, straightforward, scientific approach based on science, based on DNA 
based on genealogy, but by no means we can tell somebody, you know, well, you're not fully a Native American or you're only part Native American because that's not our right to say anything like that. We have to respect how people feel about themselves and their heritage and their legacy. But in, in this case, this is a friend of mine. She's a, she's a Navajo and uh, she knows that she has also some European ancestry. In fact, that's, this is a, a test that she has done with my heritage. And you can see it is very high percentage of Mesoamerican and Andean and uh, Native American that uh, she has. There is no way to really um, pinpoint a single area based on the flow, um, the, the, on the flow, on the, on the admixture that people had over the centuries. But it's clearly something that uh, is Native American and more likely Navajo, Nation in Arizona, Utah, and so on, as you can see in this sub definition. You can set uh, in the top part uh, uh, of, uh, of your heritage test, you can set how confident you want the test or how uh, loose you want them provided. So there are some degrees of uh, um, of thresholds that you can set to see um, your, your ancestry. But right here through a DNA test, compare it to the reference population. So other people that have been tested in their databases that have claimed to have this type of ancestry. You know, she has a very uh, high percentage of Native Americans, which indicates that uh, uh, based on this almost 75%, 80% uh, ancestry, that at least three of her, of her grandparents are full blood natives and one of the grandparents is not. And then you see down here, you know, some European ancestry based on that. So this is, this is just an introduction, but it shows you that based on the history, very unique history of how the Native American populations came to be, today genetic testing, both uh, y chromosome mitochondrial DNA and even autosomal DNA can provide a glimpse into your past and tell you uh, exactly if you had uh, some ancestors that were uh, Native Americans. So thank you for listening. I hope you find this uh, presentation interesting and uh, uh, just keep enjoying all the lectures that you have uh, available here at Rootstech this year. Thank you.